Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be looking at a radiation heat transfer example. And specifically, we're going to be looking at radiation shielding. Here's the situation. We have a hot surface, and it is radiating heat to these surroundings. Now, for whatever reason, we would like to reduce the amount of heat transfer that is being sent to the surroundings. And so we are going to try some different solutions to reduce this heat transfer. So to start off, we know that the heat transfer is based around the change in potential. And what we mean by that is the black body radiations of these two surfaces. And that will be equal to our Q dot multiplied by the total resistance between these two surfaces. Now, for this problem, the temperature of our surface is not going to change, and neither are the temperature of the surroundings. So this is set in stone, and we don't have to think too much about it. We're going to be changing our R tote in order to change our Q dot. So really, it's a lot more helpful to say that we have some Q dot, which is equal to delta P over our R total. And really what we want to say is that as we change this, our new Q dot divided by our old Q dot is going to be our old resistance divided by our new resistance. All we need to do to see how this Q dot changes is figure out how our resistances change and then invert that ratio. So to start off, let's figure out what the original resistance is. In order to do this, we need to know what the emissivities of the surfaces are. We don't need the temperatures because those don't actually factor into the resistances themselves. So let's say that our original emissivity for surface one is 0 0.75. And the emissivity of the surroundings, they're just going to act like a black body and absorb all of that radiation. So our original resistance is going to be 1 over epsilon. 1 plus 1 over epsilon 2 minus 1. And of course, all that's going to be multiplied by 1 over the area. This will be 1 over 0 0.75 plus 1 over 1, which is just 1, minus 1, all multiplied by 1 over A. These go away, and our final value is 1.33 divided by A. So for our First try at reducing this Q value, we're going to apply a reflective coating on our hot surface. So our reflective coating is going to be the same as the original case, except that our epsilon 1 is going to be equal to 0 0.1. So let's call this R1, and our resistance here is now going to be 1 over 0 0.1. Our epsilon 2 is going to stay the same, so that just sticks out as 1, minus that same 1, all multiplied by 1 over A. The 1s will cancel again, and so our resistance is going to be 10 over A. Now, we're not interested in just the resistance, we're interested in the Q dots. So let's call the Q dot for this case Q dot 1, and we're going to divide by Q dot 0. Well, that's going to be equal to the inverse of the resistances. So that's going to be R0 divided by R1, or 1.33 over A multiplied by A over 10. Now we can get rid of these areas, and the result is going to be right around 13% of our original heat flow. So simply by changing the emissivity of our surface, we're able to reduce the heat flow down to 13%. So that's great. That seems like it would be a wonderful solution. But let's say that either this isn't far enough down to meet regulations, or maybe um, the surface is actually too hot to be able to hold this coating. It might just degrade too quickly, maybe something along those lines. And so what we want to do instead is create a radiation shield around our hot surface. So this radiation shield is going to have an emissivity of its own. And we're going to say that its emissivity is going to be 0 
if we have our original surface, which is to say that we're not using that coating that we had originally, but now we have a radiation shield with a emissivity of 0.1, what will our new Q dot be? Okay, so our R2 now is going to be 1 over 0.75 because we're back to the original surface, plus that same 1 minus that 1. Our formula here is 2n over epsilon minus n. Well, n is just equal to 1 here, so we're going to end up with 2 over the epsilon of our surface, which is 0.1 minus 1. Once again, those cancel out. This value becomes 1.33, this value becomes 20, and then we subtract 1. So our final value here is going to be 20.33. Now I can plug that in. And our original resistance was 1.33. I'm going to skip the areas this time. So we'll get 1.33 divided by 20.33. And this time, we end up with about 6.5% of our original heat transfer. So that's great, but let's say that's not enough. And in fact, what we want is we want to use more of these radiation shields. And we want to reduce our total heat transfer down to 1% of our original value. We're still going to have the same type of shield. Now we're just going to have more of them. For this, we need to go back to our full equation. So R3 is going to be 1 over 0 0.75 plus 1 minus 1. That part's not going to change. But now we're going to have 2n over 0 0.1 minus n. So we can simplify that down. This first part is once again going to be 1.33. Then we have 20 times n minus n, so this will be 19n. We need to solve this so that r3 is 1% of r0. Now the way we can write that is that we want r0 over r3 to be less than or equal to 0.01. R0, we said, was 1.33. R3 was 1.33 plus 19n. That needs to be less than or equal to 0.01. So we'll take that, we'll multiply it out, and we'll end up with 1.33 is less than or equal to 0.0133 plus 0.19n. And with just a little bit of math, we can show that our n needs to be greater than or equal to 6.93. In other words, we need seven radiation shields in order to reduce our heat transfer to 1% of the original. So thanks for listening, and I hope to catch you next time.